It's not that simple. The sixth episode of Invincible Season 2 starts right after Episode 5's bloody fight between the Guardians of the Globe and the Lizard League. King Lizard still has a gun to Rex Splode's head, who is the last Guardian left standing. When King Lizard pulls the trigger, it looks like Rex is dead. Mark Grayson, Invincible, Adam Eve, and the Guardians they went into space with are still fighting a group of parasitic sequids on a warship from Mars. Shapesmith is able to protect Robot long enough for him to finish making a device that can kill pilot Russ Livingston, who is the sequid's host body. The immortal Marquand reluctantly agrees to let Mark do it because Mark is stronger. Mark sets off the device near Livingston with Immortal's help. This frees him and knocks out the sequids, most of them anyway. It turned out that two of the tentacled beasts were able to control Eve and Robot on the other side of the room, where the device probably didn't have as much power. During this time, Mark and the Immortal pick up Eve and Robot and fly them into the air. With the two possessed people held close to each other, Mark sets off the device again. The last of its energies are enough to free them from the sequids' control. Then, our heroes run for the exit while the sequids get back together. King Lizard is calling the U.S. government to demand a fee back on Earth. He will use the missiles from the captured military base against them if they don't give in to his requests. But soon, Rex, who isn't dead after all, cuts King Lizard off from his call. Even though his head is bleeding and he lost a hand earlier in the fight, Rex delivers a brutal beating to the person who tried to kill him. When troops from the Global Defense Agency arrive, he falls down. His second win doesn't last long, though. Rex's miraculous survival isn't the only surprise the GDA agents are in for. Gray Griffin's shrinking ray suddenly pops out of the body of Komodo Dragon, another member of the Lizard League. She lived through him eating her in Invincible Season 2, Episode 5, but she is badly hurt after growing back to her normal size inside her body. Mark, Eve, and the Guardians meet the Martian troops from Episode 5 on the warship. The troops thank them for taking care of the sequids, but the Martians also say Shapesmith, who is a Martian defector, has to stay behind and be killed. The group doesn't like this, so they steal a Martian fighter and leave the warship. More Martin attackers are after them, but Mark handles the situation with ease. Eve hugs him and the immortal shakes his hand sincerely. However, not everyone inside the fighter is in such a good mood. Robot tells Monster Girl that he was under Sequid's control for a brief period of time and that he is very upset about it. She's helpful until Robot changes the subject to Monster Girl's problem. Her skills make her look a little younger every time she uses them. Robot is sure he can fix Monster Girl, but she scolds him back. The episode then cuts to Debbie's house, where she is still taking care of Mark's baby half-brother. Cecil is there, supposedly to let Debbie know how Mark's job in space is going. Soon, though, his real goal becomes clear. He wants Debbie to think again about putting Mark's brother in GDA care. She then shows Cecil the door and makes it clear that she thinks of Mark's brother as family. Mark, Eve, and the Guardians learn about their fellow crime fighters' bad luck in their fight with the Lizard League at the GDA's Pentagon offices. Shrink Kate is dead, Rex is having surgery, and Shrinking Ray is on life support. The Immortal is very upset because he was seeing Dupli Kate when she died. In the same way, Eve sheds a tear for Rex because they were together in season one of Invincible. Mark, meanwhile, feels better when he's holding Amber close in his college dorm room. Mark goes to see Debbie and his brother the next day. Debbie has named him Oliver after Mark's grandpa. The happy moment ends with Dupli Kate's funeral, where the Immortal gives a moving speech. After the service, the Immortal tells Black Samson that Dupli Kate's death has hurt him more than the deaths of all the other women he loved during his long life. Mark and Amber go on a weird coffee date back at college. They talk about how Mark's job as a superhero is affecting their relationship and other parts of their lives. Mark asks out loud how he and Amber should move forward. As the talk ends on a sad note, Mark then goes back to his dorm room, where William is helping Rick get used to college life again, after season one of Invincible turned him into a cyborg. Donald is also there to help Rick on behalf of the GDA. Mark says something about how Rick looks the same after William and Rick leave. Donald doesn't take long to point out that Rick's body has changed in basic ways. Between seasons one and two, Donald's voice and clenched hands make it clear that he's still having doubts about becoming a robot again. Donald doesn't want to talk about his mood when Mark asks him if he's okay. We then go back to the GDA offices. Mark is going to see Rex, who just got out of surgery and will soon get a high-tech replacement hand. Rex says that his close call with death has made him realize how badly he treated Adam Eve, Duplicate, and the other women he goes out with. Mark replies that he knows his relationship with Amber is in trouble. After that, Rex tells Eve this information, and she is interested in it. At the same time, Debbie is meeting possible babysitters 
for Oliver at the Grayson home. She turns down a very good candidate for the job of GDA spy. Debbie is more open to the next applicant, April, after she tells her the truth about her GDA ties. Debbie finally agrees with April when she says that she, not Cecil, will be her boss. And while we're talking about Cecil, he stops by Eve's escape in the trees. He tells Eve that she is welcome to join the Guardians and thanks her for helping to stop the sequid attack. She tells him no, but she also says she's still open for last minute jobs. As Cecil teleports away, Eve's next surprise guest, Amber, shows up. At the same time, Mark calls Art Rosenbaum, a character tailor. He tells Art about his relationship problems, while Amber does the same thing with Eve in a scene that cuts between the two. Mark and Amber think they're not good enough for each other. While Mark and Amber talk about things, Art tells Mark to do the same. Eve tells Amber the same thing. In Invincible Season 2, Episode 4, Omni-Man told Mark to read the books he wrote as Nolan Grayson as his last words. Mark does so as he leaves. Mark also says that when Nolan got back from Thraxa, he looked through all of his trip books and found that none of them had any secret messages in them. Art then tells Mark that Nolan wrote a lot of science fiction books and gives Mark a box full of them. That evening, William takes Rick on a tour of the rebuilt college grounds. Rick says that after what the crazy scientist did to him, he's not sure if he's still himself after seeing a sign honoring D.A. Sinclair's victims. He also says that he still has memories of Sinclair's tests and comes back to them in flashes. Rick is sure that William and they will get through it together. Mark reads The Man with the Invincible Gun, one of Nolan's science fiction stories, in his dorm room. It's about a famous person named the Space Rider and his unbeatable weapon called the Infinity Gun. The next paperback, Savage Planet, Savage Beasts, is about two explorers who are like Voldemort and find a harsh world that is too tough for even their abilities. Mark quickly figures out that all of Nolan's books are based on real-life Viltrumite flaws that he can use against them. At the GDA, Cecil tells the immortal to take some time off. The ancient adventurer is furious, but his fight with Cecil is cut short when the GDA picks up on an unknown alien entering Earth's orbit. Even though Cecil told them not to, the immortal rushed to face the alien, who turned out to be Alan. Even though the one-eyed alien says he's not mean, the immortal charges Alan. Mark steps in, and the immortal feels bad about what he did and flies back to Earth. Mark takes Alan to his college room, and Alan tells Mark that his boss, Thetis, is actually a Viltrumite rebel who is hiding. Mark then tells them that Omni-Man is going to be killed, but Alan says the Viltrumites might not do it right away. Alan then asks Mark to go with him to the Coalition of Planets to help make plans for the war that will happen with the Viltrum Empire. Mark says no, but he does ask Alan to look over Nolan's books, which Alan confirms are real, and give them to Thetis. Alan agrees to find out where Omni-Man is before he goes, and Mark says he'll be there for the war. From across the universe, on a Viltrumite prison ship, General Craig watches over an Omni-Man who is still getting better. Craig tells Omni-Man that he needs to be in good shape to fight when he is put to death, and he urges him to join the Viltrum Empire's army again. Craig throws Omni-Man around the cell when he doesn't say anything. He then swears that Earth will suffer because it hurt one of Viltrum's best fighters in a toxic way. When Craig isn't around, Omni-Man slams his fist into the floor in defiance. Now that Shapesmith is gone, Russ Livingston cleans up his room on Earth. He starts to retch all of a sudden and throws up in the sink. A sequid moves through the pool of bile that forms. The parasite jumps on Livingston's face and takes over his body, and the titles roll. In a scene after the credits, Angstrom Levy is given a work suit on a different Earth. Levy says he's meeting an old friend, Reed, Mark, when asked what the suit is for. After going through portals to several other worlds, Levy finally arrives in the main Invincible reality. That concludes the end of Episode 6 of Season 2, Invincible. Comment down below what you thought of the episode. Smash that like button if you enjoyed the recap and subscribe to the channel for more of Season 2. Thanks for watching.